Did you know that some races in One Piece have natural elemental abilities like fire, water, or even electricity? Or that Buggy the Clown here might be related to a tribe of cannibals? And I bet you don't know that the Yonko Kaido, this venomous jailer, and even this evil pirate right here might actually all be part of a secret ancient race that has been hiding for hundreds of chapters in the story. And so let's explain every secret, history, and even crazy special abilities for every single race in One Piece, of course, starting with the massive men and women of the giant race whose culture is actually based on Norse mythology. Now obviously, we do know that giants are literally the tallest people in the One Piece world. In fact, the smallest giant is an absurd 12 meters tall, which is like stacking about 7 average people on top of each other. And yeah, that's literally the smallest one. This race is truly massive, with some of the tallest giants reaching heights of over 20 meters tall. And of course, with incredible size comes also insane natural power and we have even been told that, on average, giants are the strongest fighters in the entire world, which just makes a lot of sense. I mean, would you want this massive axe or a sword like this coming down on you? Now, one thing that you might not know is that while the giant's most well-known island is, of course, Elbaf, there are actually giants who do come from all over the world, which leads us to the most mysterious thing about the giants, which is that there appear to be secret groups among them that have even even more special abilities. For example, these are snowy giants that we once met in Punk Hazard that are twice as tall as regular giants and are completely covered with fur. There are also giant and fishmen hybrids, which don't even ask me how that one happened, but these people are called Wotans, just like this guy here, who we actually met during the Long Ring Long Long Island arc. And then of course, the most powerful giants of them all are the so-called ancient giants, also sometimes known as demon giants and these guys take it to a whole new level. The only two confirmed members of the ancient giants so far are Ors, who lived centuries ago and was once called a continent puller, and the second one is his descendant, Little Ors Jr., who helped free Ace during the battle at Marineford. Now, on top of their extra large size and strength, these two do seem like more beast than person with their horns and sharp fangs, but the next race in One Piece is even more furry than that. And that's of course because the minks are a tribe of human-like animals animals who live on the back of this massive elephant. Now, what might actually surprise you is that there is a very clear split on what the minks look like depending on their gender. For example, the males are basically full-on animals who just walk on two legs, while the females tend to look a lot more human with some added animal features like fur and animal ears. Which does seem like a little bit of fan service, but uh, we're gonna leave that aside. But despite some of their cute appearances, this race is extremely powerful powerful for two main reasons. First, they are one of the only three known races in the One Piece world who can naturally control an elemental ability, and we will talk about the other two in just a minute, but the minks can actually use something called Electro, which adds electricity to all of their attacks. Which in a world covered with water is just stupidly powerful if you ask me, but then there is of course also their Sulong transformation, and wow, I mean, this is usually both beautiful and terrible terrifying at the same time because when a mink looks at a full moon, their fur turns completely white and they gain unbelievable boosts in speed, power, and endurance. There's one downside though, because if a mink doesn't learn how to control this power and turn back into a normal form, then they can literally kill themselves by going berserk for too long. And like most non-human races, they actually have a pretty dark history as well, because at one point they had to flee to the back of this giant elephant where they didn't originally from. Which, if you ask me, it was probably to escape being wiped out by our next race here. And that's of course because there is no race, just like in the real world, that is as destructive in One Piece as humans. Only that of course in One Piece there is a quite huge variety of different humans, from the pretty average weak human that kind of could exist in our world as well, all the way up to monstrously powerful ones like Big Mom, who can wipe out an entire tribe of giants all 
all on her own. But despite their very individual powers, we already know that humans didn't always used to rule the world. In fact, some of the other truly overpowered races that we'll talk about in just a few moments were once considered gods, but humans were likely able to conquer the world thanks to their advanced technology and scientific achievements. However, you probably didn't ever realize that there are many unique groups of humans scattered around the world. Now, of course, there is something like the Kuja tribe, who are the warrior women of Amazon Lily, who seem to have a natural ability to use hockey. Plus, they somehow only give birth to women, so no men for this tribe, unless you're Luffy, of course. Now, there are also tons of other humans who have super strange appearances, such as the chestnut on top of this guy's head, the round, squishy noses of the cannibalistic Kumamate tribe, who might actually be relatives of Buggy. Then there are also these ape humans and the horned humans like the Emperor Kaido, this man scientist, the Warden of Impel Down Magellan, and this member of Blackbeard's crew as well. Because even though all of their horns kind of look different depending on the person, they could all actually be descendants of ancient giants, which also had these massive horns as well. Like, no, seriously, I just need to know if these are just like random design choices by the author, or if there's actually some real deep lore here and there's some giant ancestry tree that explains all of these interesting features here. And now, while there are so many mysteries surrounding humans, one of the most misunderstood races are actually the Fishmen and Merfolk. And that's because these are actually two separate races. And obviously, Oda took inspiration from the mermaid myths in our world to create his Merfolk. Now, you may not have realized that he basically reversed the idea to come up with the Fishmen as well. In other words, Merfolk have a fish lower body and human upper body, while Fishmen have a human lower body and a fish-like feature on their upper bodies. But even with these differences, they can both live in the sea and they can also have kids together. So let's break down the differences a little bit more here even, because the actual fishmen all have gills and lungs, which means that they can actually live both on land and underwater. Fishmen are also naturally 10 times stronger than the average human. And on top of that, they usually have some special characteristics based on the type of fish or sea creature that they represent. So uh, take Arlong here, for example, who is a saw shark fishman, and one of his special abilities is that he can actually regrow his teeth immediately. You know, kind of like how a shark has many different rows of teeth that he can kind of regrow to the front. Or take this octopus fishman who can squirt ink just like an actual octopus. But most importantly, maybe, is that the fishmen are the second major group after the minks with the ability to control an element because using their fishman karate, they can manipulate water into bullets, slashes, spears, and much, much more. Like seriously, this might be the most criminally underused overpowered ability in all of One Piece, but let's move on here. Because all of this is quite separate from the merfolk, which includes mermaids and mermen who are naturally born with a fish-like tail. Now the men will always have this tail, but luckily the women can choose to split their tail once they turn 30, so they can walk on two legs if they choose to. And while they don't have as many special abilities as fishmen, they are officially the fastest swimmers in the ocean and they can communicate with other fish in the sea as well. And now we're gonna get a little bit weird here because even though they are completely different races, merfolk and fishmen can actually have kids in One Piece and this can produce a child that is either merfolk or fishmen. However, even that can compare to the weirdness of this next race or I guess race says as we discuss the long body part tribes that there are in One Piece. And I'm of course talking about the long arm, long leg, and snake neck races, which are basically all what they sound like and are surprisingly based on ancient Japanese creatures. The long legs tribe have extra long legs like Big Mom's daughter here. The snake necks have freakishly long necks, but the long arm tribe might take it one step further because they have an entire extra elbow in each of their arms, which means that they can actually bend their arm in truly unnatural directions. Probably the most famous of these in the story is of course the musical pirate Scratchman Apu. But there's actually one thing that I bet you didn't know about these groups because while they might not be as important as some other races, the long arm tribe and the long leg tribes here have actually been fighting a terrible war that goes back all the way past to the void century, which is just kind of crazy to think that they've been fighting for longer than the world government has been in power. And actually there's one more strange group of people with extra long heads 
heads, and while we don't officially have a name for them yet, we'll just call them long hat people for now, who have a surprising number of named characters. For example, there is this marine vice admiral, this scientist who sent automata to the moon, and this pointy-headed pirate, and this ninja leader here as well. Now, what you won't believe though, is that the sky people are one of the most interesting groups in the entire story, and are clearly based on angels. And as we know from the Skypea arc, there are actually three separate groups of sky people, although they might have once been all the same at some point. And these three are the Skypeans, the Shandorans, and the Birkins, who have all differently shaped wings and share a common background. You see, during Enel's cover story, we actually learned that all of the winged people once used to live on the moon and that they eventually had to flee down to the planet because of a lack of resources. The Birkin and Skypeans settled on the clouds and the Shandorans settled on the island of Jaya down on the sea. And while we don't really know a ton more about any of their ancient histories, we do know that the Shandoran people were once friends with the ancient kingdom and were even trusted with a poneglyph. And honestly though, all three of these groups of sky people don't even have have any special abilities, like they can't even fly with their wings, which is actually kind of a major disappointment. Although they do make very good use of their natural resources located in the sky, such as the dials and the sea stone here. But speaking of special abilities, the one race with maybe the most overpowered ability in the entire story is actually the Three Eye Tribe, which may have been inspired by ancient Hindu and Tao beliefs. Now, just like another extremely important tribe that we We'll discuss in just a moment, we only know one confirmed member of the Three Eye Tribe that's still alive, and that's of course Big Mom's daughter Pudding here, who is a half blood member of this very mysterious tribe. Which I guess means that there has to be at least one more out there somewhere, like her father or something. Now, unfortunately enough though, we don't know much about them except that they have the insane ability to awaken the voice of all things. Which, if you don't remember, this ability allows anyone to essentially understand the basics of any spoken or written communication, like when Luffy could vaguely understand what was being said by these massive sea kings. And exactly because this is such an important ability, I certainly believe that Pudding, or at least another member of her tribe, will be playing a major role in the story at the end. But now, from one of the most important races, let's shift to what is honestly one of my personal favorite races in One Piece, which are the dwarfs here, or based on real world world Scandinavian mythology. And man, like these tiny creatures are simply incredible because despite their size, they're actually extremely powerful. What I mean by that? Well, an average dwarf is actually able to easily destroy an entire building. Plus, with their small size, they are experts at sneaking around and remaining unseen, and they are incredibly talented at growing natural things like plants. However, despite all the positives, the dwarves, or more specifically, the dwarves that we met in Dressrosa, have a truly dark past as well, because just like many of the other non-human races, they were once forced into slavery for hundreds of years by humans. Luckily, they were freed at some point, but still, if we've learned anything so far, it's that humans can be pretty awful in One Piece as well. Now, what you may not know about these though, is that there might actually be an entirely separate tribe of dwarves, because back in Big Mom's library, where she collects weird things, we actually saw this tiny creature pinned inside a book, which is called a Kinokobito, and while we don't know anything else about it, its small size may mean that it's related to the dwarves as well. And actually, there's also a bit of a pun here in the Japanese name, because Kinoko translates to mushroom, while Bito means human, so the name is just literally mushroom human. But now, prepare yourself for this next race, because they are probably the most individually powerful in the entire world. And I'm talking, of course, about the Lunarian tribe, who were first introduced during the battle at Wano. And this tribe has a lot of symbolism and history relating to the moon. I mean, their name literally means moon people, but they are also associated with the highest ranking Christian angels mentioned in the Bible as well. And while still there is very little known about this tribe, we met the only known last survivor during the Wano arc as well. And as you can see, they have a very unique appearance with stunning white hair, enormous black wings, and and brown skin. Plus, you might have noticed that he has literal flames burning on his back. That's right, they can literally control fire. But 
What's extra special about these flames on his back is that when they are burning, his durability shoots way up so that even Zoro cannot damage him at all. However, for some reason, when these flames then go out, he gets a speed boost, but his durability drops so much that Zoro was finally able to defeat him. Beyond that, this Lunarian can also create flame blasts and even this fire dragon. But of course, that's not even the most important thing about the Lunarians because they used to be considered a tribe of literal gods who used to live on the red line. Somehow though, this tribe was nearly completely wiped out and I can pretty much guarantee that it was because of the world government who tried to wipe them out after they took control after the Void Century and kind of built their empire on top of the red line. But what might be even more shocking though is the insane idea that demons might actually be another hidden race in One Piece. Hear me out. Have you ever wondered why devil fruits are actually called what they are? Well, wouldn't it make sense if there was actually once an actual devil or demon race that these fruits were named after? And with recent reveals in the manga, we have even more evidence that someone like the world government secret ruler Imu or maybe even the Gorosei might actually be immortal devils who have lived ever since the void century. Which would definitely explain how many of them have been able to rule the world for such a long time. But while this isn't confirmed quite yet, another secret race was just revealed in the manga as well with the introduction of a group called the Buccaneers, who in real life were actually pirates that mostly sailed in the Caribbean. Now apparently these people are a hybrid race between humans and giants, which gives them this impressive size and strength. But in addition to that, they are also one of the only known groups of people who know about the history of the legendary figure Nika. And of course, this is the name of Luffy's devil fruit, but it was also a historical person from the very distant past. And the fact that the Buccaneers know a lot about about Nika and basically consider him a savior type figure tells me that we will be learning a lot more about this tribe and their connection to Nika very soon. And on top of this, what I think most of us can't stop thinking about is how strong is Nika really? Was he a buccaneer or was he just some legendary powerful figure who freed the world with his strength? And if so, will Luffy's awakening make him the most powerful Yonko in the entire world? Well, if you want to find out everything about Luffy as an emperor, plus every single mouth-watering secret about the other past and current Yonko, you can watch the entire breakdown of the Yonko system right here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.